Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Q Design. I'm Janine and in this tutorial I want to show you how to create a patch where you have more or gain more control over the position of 3D objects attached to your face, uh, working with a face tracker and makes you more flexible in your design and also saves you so much time in the process. So let's start. Okay, and before we start with the patch group, I start with creating the scene. And of course you can skip this part. You find all chapters down below in the description. But for those of you who are on a beginner level, this part could be very helpful. So go to the plus sign, create a face mesh. We need this face mesh kind, it's kind of a mask for our 3D object. Go to your face tracker. We start by creating this kind of mask and we have this face tracker texture right here. Uh, for our mask, we also need a material. Double click on this material, call this one as, as well mask, and go to shader type flat. And first of all, we start by creating the face tracker zero texture, um, add this one to our texture. And now you see you have this texture on your face mesh. But you see uh, these fine lines here, you have to make sure when you go to your face mesh, mask, go to eyes and mouth, uh, turn this one off and now it looks way better. We might see this fine line right here. We want to make sure that we don't see this line as well. Um, go to your view, show patch editor. Double click, we start with an SDF circle, this one right here. We need a mix and a step and link this one right here. Make sure that this alpha is by one. Go to face tracker, add face tracker in this part right here. And we go to our mask material texture right here. And our radius is like, for example, this is one. So it's just the nose like in this tutorial right here. So if you want to know how to create a comic glasses, uh, watch this tutorial. Anyway, in this case, we just need uh, four, five. It's just a little bit maybe just in case for yes like this so we don't have this fine line anymore you can of course go to your mask and create an alpha but in this case you don't need another texture now we need our sphere and for this go to your library don't ask me why it look, looks like this if you don't see uh, the library it might be in the background of your project. So, hey, <laughs> go to your library and go to 3D shapes. And we search in this case for the high res sphere. Okay. Now it's right here. And we just want to add it to our face tracker. So it's attached to our face tracker. Before we start with the scale and the properties, go to the material of your sphere one. It looks like a little bit more like metal. So maybe like this looks nice. And for the scale, I work with this one right here. I want to work with a a range of uh, objects. So in this case, I create a value. This one, this is our scale, scale 100%. And in this case, it's 0 0.1, I think. It's very helpful. Go to add the scale right here from our sphere. When you attach it, there you get this. We need 
to attach it to uh, vector three. So go to vector three. So you have these right here. We want to start with the upper eyebrow. So we need our face tracker. And so drag and drop this into your uh, patch editor. And we need our face and we start with eyebrow. This raised eyebrow, lower eyebrow, this is more like if you attach an action to it. But in this case, we want uh, the properties. Add this one to your patch editor. We start with the left top or this one left top. And go to your properties. And now when you add, attach it directly to your left top. And there it is. And it looks fine so far. If you have these feeling it's a bit off when you move your head go to your project edit properties there you find our get capabilities go to accuration and put this on high that should that should help a bit and maybe quality automatic compression none Maybe it's not for the motion or face tracker, but just in case. Perfect so far, but we want to make sure that we have a little bit more control over the position of, uh, of our object. So go to add, make sure it's three vectors and link this first one is our face tracker position like before. But now I just want to start by, oh, okay, it's gone and it's gone. Want to, to want to control this a little bit. So I don't see the sphere, so I make sure it's position I need it. I want it up here, but now I want it a bit up, a bit higher. This is, that's too high. Uh, so just a little bit. This is very frustrating. So to gain more control over the range of the positioning. We want to work with a slider so you can work more accurate. Go to group this one. I call this one position object. Go to group properties. The first one, this one right here is our face finder. Posi position and we want to add three more. This is our X position, Y position and that position. I don't know. X, Y, Z. Okay. And we work with a slider. Slide between minus one and one. Like this but in this moment when you switch to the next input it circles I don't know why it circles back so what I f figured out is just you go out of the property and go back into the group property and may yeah you work with this one as well Minus and one default is in the middle zero out. It's a bit annoying. I don't know why uh, or I didn't figure out what is might be the problem. Me. So this is working for me. Double click. Now we have our input face finder position X, Y, Z. And we need to pack this three vectors boopy doop x y z up here now we have more control over it now when i work with this one i have more control over the position but the position is a bit off in this case you might want to make sure that the, the range of your scale is a bit more narrow. I create another input, go to properties, plus this is our range. 
and create uh, three vectors. It's like X, Y, Z. And in this, this case, I know the range for uh, X is 0 0.01. And we work with this one for these three ranges. Okay. Double click on this one. We have our range right here. Go to unpack in this case, unpack, unpack this. We link it before we pack the X, Y, Z. We start with multiply. We need three multiply, what, what, what? Yeah, first one is our X or our vector we wanna use. And the second one is our range. This, this, and also right here. Now you got more control. So, for example, if you want to put it down here, or in this case, I would put it up here. Maybe you sh it should li look like a piercing, or if you're want to make it look like a half sphere and you put it a little bit more into your skull. Um, maybe the range is too, too much for the Z. Maybe you want it a bit smoother so you can work with smaller range and it's more accurate, maybe five. And yes, I wanna use this property for more 3D objects. So go to convert to patch asset. Now get uh, this wonderful orange look. Uh, when you now drag and drop this one from your patch for your assets right here and start to add properties set the range by five for example but you should see it right uh, down here as well as five for example this is pretty helpful maybe you want to attach some other properties for example the color, a different texture, the scale or something like that. You can work with a patch. So, but I want to show you how to work with this one. So we start with this up here. We want to set one another one down below. So go to left center top. Another sphere by uh, simply, yeah, confirm it's okay. Create a new sphere, make sure this one as well is attached to our scale 100%. Or maybe I just want to add this down below and I want to make a new scale. Command V, yeah. Scale by, for example, 50, so we see the difference a bit better. Um, go to a number 50, 0 0.05 in this case. So just, this is our first one, this is our second one, go to scale, add this one right here, perfect, link this one down here, go to position, we, and now go to in the other direction, of course. You know, when you, for example, work with the eyelid, I uh, want to attach it to the eyelid as well. And lower eyelid, for example, go to, I just create a new sphere. Just one, confirm, delete. And for example, the upper, the lower eyelid center, lower eyelid center. And of course, scale also just 
50% and object upper lower eyelid and position. And lower it a bit. It's like right here. Yeah. And there are so many possible options. It is really helpful if you figure out how to combine the perfect patch when you, for example, work very often with 3D objects that you attach to your face. Or, um, uh, this one is a perfect example for that. If you know someone who wants to know this, please share this tutorial Ding! with this person. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section down below. I really appreciate your time. Enjoy the process. Bye bye.